Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to Factorio. Today we're going to pick up where we left off, right? So last time, we finished our mining outpost tutorial level. Today we jump into tutorial level 3, the power plant. So let's just dive right in. Hit play. Okay. I could use some equipment from our crashed ship, but first I need to locate it. If I had enough electricity, I could build a radar to locate the crash site. I have the electricity test set up almost ready, I just need some water from the lake. So it wants us to build an offshore pump at the edge of the water, right? So let's open up our inventory with E. <clears throat> and here you can see highlighted the offshore pump. So let's left click on that to build it. But just as a quick heads up, you can see we need an iron gear, two electronic circuits, and one pipe. So it's got to craft those, in those intermediaries first. So you'll be able to see that in the crafting queue here. Click on that, you can see it's crafting the intermediaries, and then it'll get to the pump. Sweet! So now that we have the pump, let's go ahead and put it on our quick bar. I like to put them up here. And then let's close our inventory, and let's go ahead and place it right next to our boiler, right? So you see the green squares? These green squares indicate locations where you can put the pump, and the pump will automatically rotate based off of where the green square is at. Now the pump, you're going to want to connect to the boiler, and you'll see that in just a sec. So I'm going to go ahead and put the pump here. <clears throat> and now the objective is to build pipes to get the water from the offshore pump into the boiler. So we need to build pipes, right? So let's go ahead and build like five pipes. And then I'm going to put them on my quick bar as well. Okay. So now we have water going into the boiler. Awesome. So now it's asking us to put some fuel into the boiler so it can produce steam. So if we turn on alt mode, right, you'll be able to see the pump pumps water into the boiler. You can see the boiler on the sides of the boiler, they intake water and pass through water. And then the output out the top is steam, right? But it takes fuel in order to actually create the steam. It needs to burn something in order to boil the water to create steam in order to generate power. So I'm going to go ahead and put the coal down here on our quick bar. And then I'm going to take the coal and I'm just going to put half of it in there. So control right click. Now our objective changes to build pipes to connect the steam output to the steam engine. So let's go ahead and do that. You can do that by dragging, right? Or you can just click one at a time, either or. But click drag. And now it's all connected. So how this is working, right? Good, the steam engine's now producing electricity. Right? So the pump pushes water to the boiler. The boiler burns fuel in order to generate steam. The steam pushes turbines in the steam engine. And the steam engine then generates electricity. Right? Now notice that the steam engine has stopped. Right? The steam engine has stopped. It's not because the boiler ran out of resources. The boiler still has resources. Right? It stopped because we're not consuming the electricity. So the steam engines are smart. Right? They only consume the steam that they need in order to generate the output that the factory needs. So as the factory grows, the steam engines will work harder, right, until they reach their maximum capacity. Which if you look over there on the top right, <clears throat> underneath the text generates electricity, the power output is what it's currently outputting versus its maximum, right? It can output a maximum of 900 kilowatts of energy, which doesn't mean anything right now, but as we go into electricity a bit more, we'll see how this works out, right? So for now, it's not generating any electricity because there's nothing that needs the electricity, right? So that's why the objective now says connect the electric mining drill to the steam engine using small electric poles. So we need to build some of these small electric poles, right? The power lines. So let's open up our inventory. And you can see now we've got additional stuff that we can build. <clears throat> and over here is our small electric poles. And you can see that they take one wood and two copper cables. Or in other words, one wood and one copper plate, right? The copper cables take one copper plate and it spits out two copper cables per copper plate, which is nice. So let's go get some wood, right? The closest tree is right here. Let's just grab that. And boom, now we have wood. So let's go ahead, excuse me, and craft a few of these power poles here. Something else too is when you craft a power pole, 
each cycle creates two power poles. So we created four cycles that gave us eight power poles. So let's add them to our quick bar here. And now I'm going to use Q to grab it. And then I'm just going to drop one right here. <clears throat> and now our electric mining drill is taking electricity from the steam engine in order to mine the coal and put it onto the belt. And over here, we have an electric inserter, right? A yellow inserter. I typically just call them by the color. But here we have an electric inserter that requires electricity to function. So we can push Q here as well and give power to the electric inserter so that way it can grab the coal, put it in a box. Again, I'm gonna rebuild things because I like to keep things a little bit neater. Oh, biters, hold on. Hello, biters. Nice to see you. Holy cow. Wasn't expecting you guys so soon. All right, so let's clean things up. So we can rebuild stuff a little bit cleaner, like I said. And then while I'm building stuff, I'll continue to explain. So let's start with the electricity again, right? So we have the offshore pump. So let's go ahead and place the offshore pump. I'm going to go ahead and place like one pipe there just to give a little bit of space to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put boilers here, steam engines here. And then we'll put our boiler here. I'm going to push R to rotate it so that way it's voice, it's voicing, facing up. And then I'm going to connect the steam engine directly to it. There's no need to connect pipes to this, right? So now we've got our power set up. And then what I'm going to do is I want to auto feed, right? I want to automate this. So I want to feed coal into the electric engine directly rather than feeding it by hand like I was doing before. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our inserters, add them to our quick bar, belts as well, boxes too. What else needs to be on the quick bar? Electric mining drills are good to have on there. That's good to have on there. All right, sweet. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put an inserter there. That way the inserter can feed the coal into the steam engine. And then we're going to put a belt right there in order to run coal there, right? And we'll expand the belt out as we go ahead and add things to it. So we're going to grab our electric mining drill and we need to mine coal, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put an electric mining drill here. One thing you'll notice, right, is with the burner miners, they only mined resources directly below them. Electric mining drills have a little bit of a field around them, so it can mine around them as well. So you could put one here and then another one two spaces over, and these mining drills will mine what's under them as well as what's in between them because the field covers that, right? But in a game like Factorio where you want to build big, Typically, it's better to place them right next to each other just because you want to mine resources faster to be able to build things faster, right? But in this case, we're just going to use one for now because we only have three in total and we're going to need other resources as well. So we'll have to build up pretty slowly here. So now that we've got the electric mining drill, let's connect that with the belt, right? Now let's talk a little bit about, well, once I get the setup, we'll talk a little bit about belts. So I'm going to go ahead and put power pole there and there. And then I'm going to actually plan out another one. So I'm just pushing Q to grab a ghost. Do that. I'm going to plan out three more engines as well. And I'm going to grab an inserter, but I don't actually want to place it. I just want to plan it. So if you do have the thing, but you just want to plan, when you're holding it like this, push shift and it will change to doing a ghost, right? So now I can hold shift and place, and it'll place a ghost instead. And then I can plan this a little bit better. So I wanna go ahead and put power poles there and there, because I like things nice and neat, and then we'll go ahead and put power here. Now, you notice here, these things are showing a red power symbol, right? This means that they are connected, but they don't have power, right? There's a blackout. The reason for that is simple, right? We, we replaced the boiler so it doesn't have fuel. So we're going to put like five pieces of coal in there and that should keep things running now. So now we have the inserter taking the coal, putting it into the boiler as the boiler needs it. We have the miner mining coal and taking it to the inserter. So now that we've got that set up, 
if I look at the map by pushing M, you'll see we've got red stuff. These are the biters, right? The biters are the enemies. And just to make things a little bit easier as far as teaching goes, I'm going to go on the offensive relatively soon in order to just take them out. That way they don't bother us anymore. Because you see, they're going to bother us. They're preparing another attack. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rush to build a submachine gun, which means I need to get um, iron, right? So that way I can craft the machine gun and I can craft the ammunition. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice here the inserter is not continually grabbing the coal, and that's because the boiler is full. The boiler will hold up to five coal, and only once it runs out of the fifth coal and drops to four will the inserter grab another one. That way other boilers down the line will be able to also share. This way you don't have just one boiler taking all the coal all for itself. So it's really nice and well balanced that way. All right, so let's go ahead and start getting start getting iron plates. Now, I'm again going to use a direct insert kind of method here, but I'm going to be using inserters because another thing to note about electric mining drills is they mine faster than burner miners, right? Burner miners mine fast enough to where you can just direct put into a furnace. But electric mining drills mine a little bit faster than that. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to actually have one miner feeding into two furnaces at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and place my miner here. I'm going to place it over here, actually. Oh my goodness, that was a good biter attack. Goodness gracious. All right, so we're going to place our miner. And then I'm going to place an inserter here and an inserter here because the miner is going to drop iron onto the ground. And then the inserters will be able to pick it up and place it into furnaces. So I can put furnaces there and there. And then I can put half stack there, the rest there. And then this setup needs power. So I'm going to go and put a power pole here and here and then run across. And we're out of power poles. So let's see. Let's go ahead and get a couple more trees so we can build a couple more power poles. Very good. And there we go. So now that's connected to power and you can see it getting to work, right? So the miner outputs onto the ground, the inserter grabs it, puts it into the furnace. Once this one has enough ore in there, this one will also start picking up, see? So it's all good. The electric mining drill will keep both of these furnaces happy for the most part. So now let's go ahead and grab this stuff. And we need quite a bit more for the SMG. We're still waiting for 14 more. So it's going to be a little bit. But we'll get there. We're at 23. While we're waiting for that, let's go kill these rocks. Having rocks is nice. And some rocks, as you can see up there in the top right, some rocks also have coal in them. And getting the coal like this is going to be really convenient. That way we don't have to pick it up off the belt. Now, if you do want to pick coal up off the belt, which we probably will eventually, is what you'll do, right, is in order to pick stuff up off the ground, you push the F key. The F key will basically suck it up like a vacuum, whatever is underneath your character. So I push F, right, and right now it's not grabbing anything, but I hold F and I run left, and it grabs the coal off the belt. So that way you can grab things off belts that way. Let's go ahead and continue to feed coal into these. Grab our resources, build a submachine gun, because that's going to be a lot better than a pistol. And then we don't have any assemblers, do we? And we don't have enough copper for assemblers either. So we're going to have to handcraft some ammunition. And that's fine. Let's go ahead. Whoop. So now that I've crafted the submachine gun, we've paused, right? And it says you can equip several weapons. The active one is marked with a green background, right? So that's the active one. So right now, even though we've crafted the submachine gun, we're still using our pistol. We're going to fix that. You can change active weapons by pressing tab. The weapon to change to must have ammo. So right now, there's no ammo connected to the submachine gun. So if I push tab, it's not going to it's not going to change over. But instead of even having a pistol equipped, there's never a reason to have the pistol equipped once you have a submachine gun, in my opinion. So we're just going to remove the pistol, throw it in our inventory, put the submachine gun there, and we're good to go. So now let's go ahead and build some ammunition. Let's go ahead and build these eight. And that will get us 10. 
Now on this map, there's some little blue dots. I don't know if you guys can see them or not, but there's some little blue dots. And these blue dots have resources in them. Oh, hold on. Let me push M to close because we're being attacked. There we go. So you're going to see some little blue dots. And some blue dots are the power poles here, right? So power is indicated in blue. There's also little toggles up here to show certain things on the map. We'll go over those in more detail over time. But for now, power stuff is blue. But you're going to see other little blue dots on the map besides the water here. You'll see a little blue dot right there by the red, a little blue dot down here. There's a little blue dot up here too. These are little caches that the developers left on the map that can help us out. So we're gonna go down here. You see we have a box that has gears and grenades in it. So let's grab those. I'm gonna put grenades onto the quick bar. The grenades are gonna come in handy. So that's gonna help. Let's get some more iron, craft some more ammo. And then let's go up and take out the first biters. So we're going to go up here. And then I'm actually going to go over here to the right because I want to kill these biters, but I don't want to I don't want to call attention of these biters up here just yet. So let's go up here. They're going to attack in order to defend themselves. And then we're going to take out the nest. Now, in the tutorial levels, when you kill a nest, the biters don't re-expand. So once I kill this nest, th this nest is permanently dead. In free play, oh, we ran out of ammo, so we're just going to go punch it. <laughs> That's okay. We can punch it to death. It's fine. So once the nest is dead, they're not going to rebuild it. In free play on default settings, biters do re-expand. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. So here in the tutorials, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to kill things off. That way it's going to buy me time to be able to explain things better. So we've killed that off. Let's grab some more plates, build some more ammo. It's all good. Now, I just happen to know, because I've played this map before, that this blue dot has a cache of level 2 ammo, armor-piercing ammo, which is not craftable here. But that ammo is better. So I'm going to actually remove this ammo. And then we're going to go up here, and I'm going to control left click on the cache to grab the ammo. It should hopefully auto equip it. If it doesn't, I'll quickly open my inventory, grab it, and equip it, and then close my inventory. And that ammo will help us destroy the next base. You can see it right there if you look hard enough. I know it's nighttime, so it's a bit darker, but right there is the cache. So we're going to run up here, and as soon as we're in range, we're going to control click it to grab it. It equipped it. Now we can defend ourselves. And we can kill what's called the worm here. The worm is a, you can consider a siege tank like in StarCraft, but it's always sieged. So it doesn't, it doesn't attack, but it has a ranged attack that stays on the ground and deals damage over time. Worms hit hard. I usually try to prioritize them first. So now we've taken out that nest. One nest left, and it looks like we're about to be attacked. One nest left. And once we've dealt with that nest, then we'll be in good shape to take as much time as we need. I'm also going to right click on some fish, put some fish here on my quick bar. You can eat fish to heal up. So notice that when you take damage, a green bar will show up and go down, right? Once you're out of combat for a short amount of time, your health will start to automatically regen. But if you're in the middle of combat and you're taking damage, but you want to keep fighting, you can grab fish, left click, and your character will eat the fish and that heals 80, 80 health, or about a third-ish of your health. So, really helpful to have fish when you're going to go out for a fight. And we're going for a fight. So let's go ahead and grab our grenades, because we're running a bit low on ammo, so I don't want to use... I don't want to use my ammo to kill the biters, if I can use grenades to do it. All right, and then we'll finish it off. All right, sweet. Oh, see, I'm standing in the goop. That was bad. All right, let's go ahead and grab our stuff from the cache. That gave us a lot of gears to work with, a good amount of iron to work with. So life is pretty good. So now we can go ahead and focus. Notice how we're healing up now. I can eat a fish and just immediately heal that up if I want to. Lovely. All right. So now that we've killed all the biters on the map, we are free. We are free to take our time. 
and take our time we will. So how are things doing over here? So we're going to go ahead and grab our iron plates. That gives us tons of iron plates. Up next, we're going to want some copper, right? So let's pause for a second. I've been going through a lot of stuff and I'm not really explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing, right? I did explain why I killed the biters, but why do I want to go for copper next? Well, we need to build radars, right? So we need to gather resources, build radars. So if we open up our inventory, go into our crafting menu, you can see radars are over here. And radars take 10 iron plate, five iron gear wheels, and five electronic circuits, right? Now we can craft all that stuff by hand, which is fine, but we don't have enough copper to do it. You'll notice that the copper is highlighted in red. That means we don't have enough. We've got one copper, we need 7.5 per radar. And the game wants us to build three. So that's why we need copper. I'm going to use a similar method of mining copper that I did over here rather than belting it. And while we're getting copper, and once we have copper set up, I'm going to give you guys some more tips about belts and stuff like that because it's pretty important. Let's go ahead and put those there. We're going to go ahead and run up here. I'm going to hold down F to take the, co uh, the coal from the belt. Put half in here, the other half there. Lovely. Oh, and I need to actually provide power, you know, as you should. Need another, whoops, I built another pipe, but whatever. Two more power poles should help us reach. Lovely. There we go. And just in time, we're out of copper. We can't build more power poles, but now we have copper going. Now we can build more power poles, which we're going to need. All right. So let's talk a little bit about belts, right? So you're going to be using a lot of belts in Factorio. Right now we're just direct feeding all sorts of stuff, right? But as your factory expands, you're going to be relying really heavily on belts. So it's best that you guys know about them, right? You're going to start off with yellow belts. There are multiple tiers of belts. There's yellow belts, which you're going to get first. There's red belts, which are twice as fast. And then there's blue belts, which are, which are one and a half times faster which are one and a half times faster than red belts. Now, I'm not gonna worry about teaching you guys the speed mechanics too much at this point in time. Just, you know, we're gonna focus mainly on the yellow belts, right? So first things first, you're going to notice that here on the yellow belt, right? The coal is just hanging out on one side of the belt. And that's because belts do have two sides, right? So if I grab coal and I push Z to drop it, I can drop coal onto the other side. So belts have two sides. And because belts have two sides, it means you can also put multiple things on a belt. So I can have coal on one part and iron plates on another, for example, which is great. A couple of other things to know about belts. I'm going to go ahead and place a belt, a couple of belts here, and I'm going to go ahead and place a chest here, and I'm going to place an inserter here, and I'm going to put some, let's put some stone in this chest, right? Now, this inserter is going to take stone from the chest, but notice where the inserter places the stone. The inserter places the stone on the far side of the belt. So when an inserter is perpendicular to a belt, remember the inserters always place on the far side of the belt. If I reverse this, if I reverse this, hold on, this isn't the best example. Let me go ahead and place some belts down. And I'm going to put some stone on both sides of the belt. Like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the inserter here with a box. So let me put the box first and then the inserter. And notice the inserter pulls from the closest side first. Okay, so an inserter will place on the far side, it will pull, it will pull from the closest side first. And then once it runs out of resources on the closest side, it'll pull from the further side. So that's one thing to know. The other thing to know is that I'm going to go ahead and put an inserter here with a box full of rocks, power pole. Now notice here the inserter, oops. Let me put another belt there. Notice here that the inserter places on the right side of the belt. So when the inserter is in parallel with the belt, the inserter will place onto the right side of the belt, right? 
Same thing applies on the top. It'll place on the right side from the direction that the inserter is facing. So if I put an inserter there and suck all this up, fill the box, fill it with stone, throw down a power pole there. Again, it puts it on the right side of the belt according to the insert. So bear that in mind as well. Normally, whenever I'm building factories, it's easier for me to remember to just to just know that inserters always place on the far side of the belt, so I almost always put them perfectly. But just so you know. Let's see, something else about belts. So as far as belt speed goes, right? Yellow belts, they transport 15 items per second. That means each side of the belt transports 7.5 items per second. You'll be able to use that in order to do math, in order to determine how much of something you need on a belt in order to properly build something out. We're not going to go too much into ratios during the tutorial levels, but just know that belts, yellow belts, move 15 items per second on both sides, or 7.5 items per second on one side. And that will help you if you want to math out perfect ratios for building stuff. You don't have to do that, by the way. Most of the time, I don't. I just go for close enough. This feels right, or I'll round things up, right? That kind of thing. You don't have to build perfectly in Factorio. You don't. Good enough is good enough. All right. So now that we've talked about all of that, let's go ahead and make sure everything is nice and fueled up. So I'm going to grab that, control left click to drop everything I can into the furnaces. Lovely. And then let's go ahead and grab everything. Wow, that, that. I, I took a long time to explain that stuff. I got a lot of iron and copper there. All right, we got plenty of resources now to build the radar. So let's go ahead and build the three radars. One, two, three. Now, every time we place a radar, the game's going to give us a tip. I'm just going to give it a minute in order to finish crafting the radars, and then we'll start placing them down. Okay, so we've got our radars. I'm going to go ahead and put them on the hot bar here, or the quick bar here. And radars need to be given power, right? So I'm going to put them in range of one of these power poles. You can see the range of the power pole by hovering over it or by grabbing something that needs power. That way you can see the range. Notice how it turns red. That means it's in range. It doesn't have to be all the way in range, right? You can see part of it's hanging off. As long as part of the building is in range, it's okay. It doesn't have to be the whole building. Like notice here, the electric mining drill, Not the whole building is not in range, just part of it, and that's fine. So let's place our radar. All right, so radars scan the surroundings. They give you vision. The more of them you have, the faster you'll be able to locate the shipwreck. So they scan the areas around the map that you haven't explored yet. Now, this map is really small, so we've actually explored the whole thing already. But in free play, the map is ginormous, basically endless. It's not endless, but it's basically endless. So radars scan areas that you haven't been, and then they rescan areas over time as well, just to give you updated information. In addition to that, radars also provide you vision of the immediate location that they're in. So that way, when you're looking at a map, you can zoom in on the details. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So let's go ahead and clear my hand, right? Now, if we look at the map, notice that right now the map is in white. Well, it's more clear right here. That's because the miner and me both have vision, right? So I'm going to run up here to the top right of the map. So close the map with M. We're going to run up here to the top right of the map, and I'll explain what I mean by that vision. If we had the mini-map, that would be nice to help me explain a little bit better, because obviously the mini-map will show you your vision as well. We're going to run all the way up here to the top right, okay? So now that we're here in the top right, let's open our map with M. And you see here... Our character provides vision, of course, makes sense, but our radar also provides vision. We can still see down here, but we can't see over here. This area is darker. The scanner will scan this area again later. It also tries to scan around the map, but this is the edge of the tutorial map. So it's not going to be able to scan the edges, but in free play, it would scan the edges too. So that way you can get more information, expand your map vision. <clears throat> the other thing that I mentioned about scanners is it gives you vision of the immediate area. 
So if I try to zoom in on this dark box, you can see here it's actually scanning this section of the map right now, the, the scanner, the radar. It stopped scanning now. If I try to zoom in on a darker section of the map, notice how it stays blurry, right? I can't see things clearly. I can see that there's a blue spot. I can see there's green spots, which are probably trees. I can see lighter brown spots, which are probably cliffs, right? But it's blurry. But as I zoom in on an area where I have vision around my player, perhaps, I can see clearly right? I can also see clearly in the area that my radar provides vision in as well. So I can be away from my factory and I can check what's going on in my factory while I'm out and about. So if I'm out killing biters, for example, and I want to check on my factory to make sure things are working okay, I can just zoom in in that view and now I can see the factory. Awesome. Radars are really helpful for that. It's way more important later just know it's really important to make sure that you have coverage of your factory with radars because later on when you get to bots and things like that you're going to want to be able to execute commands remotely and the best way to be able to do that is if you have vision so that way you can execute the commands remotely on stuff all right let's go back to our factory and we'll place the rest of the radars <laughs> Running back to the factory. Back to the factory. Oh, before I place another radar, let me also explain a little bit more about electricity, right? So our engine can produce up to 900 kilowatts of electricity. If we hover over that, you can see that right now it's outputting somewhere between 500 and 600 kilowatts at any point in time, depending on what the factory needs, right? but its maximum that it can produce is 900 kilowatts. You can also hover over any power pole at any time to check whether or not your factory is fully satisfied with electricity. If the bar up there in the top right is green, that means it's fully satisfied, it's happy. Awesome. If it's yellow, it means it's partially satisfied. So your factory is going to slow down. It's not getting enough power to run at optimal speeds, right? It's going to slow down. That's called a brownout, okay? And then if the bar is red, that means a blackout. You have no power. That's a big problem, of course. Even a brownout's a problem. You want your factory to be running at full speed all the time. If it has to slow down, that can spiral out of control, right? So let's say, for example, we're in a brownout. That means that the inserters are going to work slower. So they're going to take a longer amount of time to put coal into the, boil into the boiler. That means the miner is going to run slower. It's going to take longer to mine coal. And you can kind of see how that will spiral out of control. If the factory goes slower, it's not going to be able to generate power as quickly because it's not gathering resources as quickly. If it's not gathering resources as quickly, it's going to continue to slow down as it gathers less and less resources until it eventually spirals into a full blackout. So if you notice a brownout, it's something you should fix as soon as you can in order to avoid that spiral and go into a full blackout. The last thing too is you can also click on a power pole to get a whole bunch of data about your factory and its power consumption. The main things that I look at when I'm playing are the satisfaction gauge up here and the production gauge here. The satisfaction gauge just tells you, hey, here's, my, here's how much the factory needs on the right. Here's how much the factory requires in order to keep running. And on the left is how much your power can supply, right? So right now it's green. The, the factory is satisfied. Production on the right shows the maximum production capability of your power generation, right? So we have one engine. One engine can produce 900 kilowatts, which means our total maximum production of power is 900 kilowatts. If our factory needs more than 900 kilowatts, then that's going to cause a brownout. We won't be able to provide enough power and we'll have to add additional power generation in order to fix that. And then on the left is how much power the factory is consuming. Generally speaking, I like to keep this bar at about 50% or lower. Once it starts hitting around the 80%-ish range, that's a really good point to start adding more power because your factory is growing and you're near your power limit. The third area is the accumulator charge. We don't need to talk too much about that at the moment. That has to do with solar power. Right now we're just running on steam power. But when you're running on solar power, right, you get solar panels. Solar panels provide power based on the sunlight, right? Well, as you guys saw, there's nighttime in Factorio, which means at night, the solar panels aren't going to work. So how do you generate power for your factory at night? 
But what you do is you have your solar panels in abundance or steam engines as well to help support the solar panels. And then any extra charge that your factory could generate, it will generate and store in accumulators, which are basically just big batteries to store power. Then at night, when the solar panels aren't working, any charge that your factory needs that any other power source isn't able to provide, like steam power, it will draw from the accumulators. It will drain your accumulators' batteries. And that's how you kind of cycle. During the day, you recharge the accumulators. At night, you draw from the accumulators. And if you want to run 100% on solar, then the goal is to make sure that you have enough solar panels to fully charge your accumulators during the day and enough accumulators to keep your factory running all the way through the night. You've also got the graphs here that help you monitor your consumption versus your production. And you can click these buttons up here to change the range of your graphs. So these graphs are showing the last five seconds of consumption and production. Change that to the last minute, change that to the last 10 minutes, last hour, last thousand hours, holy cow, all that kind of thing. And then down here on the bottom, you can see the structures that are consuming power and how much power they are consuming. On the right, you have power production. So one steam engine is currently generating 340 kilowatts of electricity. On the left, you have your consumers. So we have one radar sucking up 300 kilowatts. Radars are expensive in the early game. It's sucking up 300 kilowatts of power. Five inserters are sucking up two kilowatts of power or were. And then the mining drills were sucking up power as well. Right? So the inserters are working, they're consuming power. The miner is working, it's consuming power. Sweet. So that's how you read the power stuff. Let's go ahead and push E to close that. And let's go ahead and place another radar. So I'm going to push Q and just place that right next to it. Radars consume a lot of electricity, so make sure your energy production is sufficient, right? Like I showed in the graph, radars consume 300 kilowatts each. We can only produce a maximum of 900 kilowatts, so we're going to need to be careful or else we're going to encounter a brownout. So now if we click on a power pole, you can see now we're at that like 80-ish percent range. So now it's a good time to expand power. And that's because our radars are eating a lot of power. So let's go ahead and expand power. So to expand power, we're going to need another boiler. So boilers take four pipes and one stone furnace, or four plates and five stone. We've got that in abundance. So let's go ahead and build one of those. And then... I'm going to build three more engines and then I'll explain one of the power, one of the ratios that you're going to want to just know off the top of your head because you're going to use it all the time. Oops, I don't want four, I just want three. I left click down there to cancel the one. All right, so let's go ahead and place our boiler. Let's place an inserter. And then let's place our engines. So Q, Q, Q. You can Q on Ghost, by the way, in order to grab as well. So now we've got two boilers and four engines. So now let's talk a little bit about math, right? And if you don't like math, it's fine, you can skip it. Um, so before I dive into the math, the ratio that I'm going to tell you about is the steam power ratio. And that is one pump of water can supply enough water for 20 boilers, and each boiler can supply enough steam for two engines. In other words, one pump can supply 20 boilers and 40 steam engines worth of power. So if you need to generate even more power than that, then you'll need to get another pump. Because if you try to add a 21st boiler to it, it's not gonna get any water because the first 20 boilers are gonna consume all the water that this pump can push out. Okay, so that's the ratio. Now I'm going to explain the math to figure that out. <laughs> so that way you can figure out other ratios yourselves, right? So if we look, so if we hover over the pump and you look at the top right, you can see its pumping speed maximum is 1,200 units of water per second. I don't know what a unit is. It could be a gallon, could be, I don't, I don't know. 1,200 units of water per second, okay? So that's how much water a pump can push out maximum. Right now it's only pushing out 20-ish units of water per second. Great, great. But maximum of 1,200. A boiler... <clears throat> under the consumes water section, shows you that a boiler can consume up to 60 units of water per second. So you take the 1,200 units of water per second that a pump can push out, 
you take the 60 units of water per second that a steam engine or that a boiler can consume and that gives you 20 right you divide 1200 by 60 gives you 20. so that's how you get the 20 boilers so now for the steam engines so you can see here that it generates steam so you've got the generate steam section there and you can see the output the output it can output 60 units of steam per second maximum okay so it will convert the water that it consumes up to 60 units of water into 60 units of steam nice and even perfect awesome so now we hover over a steam engine a steam engine can consume 30 units of steam per second so you take your 60 you divide it by 30 that gives you two so one boiler can provide enough steam for two engines one pump can provide enough water for 20 boilers and that's how you figure that out that's the math <laughs> so yeah if you skipped it totally fine don't worry about it just remember that ratio one 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 pump to 20 boilers to 40 steam engines that's the ratio all right let's go ahead and place our third um what's this called radar <laughs> had a brain fart there for a second the enemies might attack your radars you might want to protect them with gun turrets so i'm not going to show you gun turrets here because there's no well i can show you gun turrets it's fine because we're gonna have to wait a little bit anyway so basically what it's warning you about right is when you generate well i'll explain it in, uh through the map actually it'll be more visible there but before i do that we'll just make sure that we go over the objective so we've got our three so now we just need to wait for the three radars to scan 50 units of map we can build more radars to do this more quickly but i'm not going to because i'm going to use this time to explain stuff wait awesome so let's open our map so it warned us that biters might attack us right and in particular it warned us that biters might attack the radars now here's the thing anything that consumes power generates pollution so i click the pollution icon here and i zoom back out and it's not actually showing the pollution that's lame i wish it did long story short i wish this was actually that it would actually show the pollution that's a little unfortunate all right anyway Things that consume power generate pollution. So radars generate pollution, miners generate pollution, furnaces generate pollution, right? It generates pollution in a cloud, okay? Over time, the cloud expands. Trees and ground and, and, and everything else consume some of the pollution in order to slow the cloud's expansion, but the cloud will expand. As the cloud expands, eventually it will hit a biter's nest, like one of the biter's nests that we killed off. When the pollution cloud hits a biter's nest, that pisses them off. So the biters attack, right? And the biter's first target is things that cause pollution. Biter's second target is things that don't cause pollution. So when the biters come and attack, they're going to attack your steam engines first, your radars first, your miners first, your, your furnaces first. Once those are destroyed, it will attack your power poles and your belts, things that don't generate pollution. Okay? So, you need to protect your factory. You can do that in one of two ways. In the tutorial levels, the easier way is to just go kill them off. That way, they're not even around to bug you anymore. They don't re-expand in the tutorial levels, so that's easier. Just go kill them off. You kill them first before they come to try to kill you. <laughs> this would go faster if I had more radars, that's true, but I'm going to use this time to explain. In your own playthroughs, build more radars. It'll go faster. Um, let's see, what was I going to say? Yeah. And then in free play, but with default settings on, biters will re-expand. So in free play, you're going to have to play a bit more defensively, and that's where things like gun turrets come into play. Let's go ahead and grab iron and copper. And let's build a gun turret. By the way, a gun turret takes 20 iron plates, 10 copper plates, and 10 iron gear wheels. So quite a bit of resources, 40 iron plates and 10 copper plates. I'm going to put the turret on the quick bar down here. All right, so we have a turret. First thing you'll notice is with the turret, you see a green circle around it. That circle is the turret's range. Any biters that enter in this range will be fired at. Biters that are outside the range obviously won't be fired at. So if you put multiple turrets, you'll want them to cover each other, right? build another turret 
So when you build turrets, you want to build them in a way to where they'll cover each other, right? So you've got one turret and you'll want to put it, you'll want to put your other turret like in range of the other one, something like that. Now you have two turrets that are covering each other and as a result are covering a much larger area. If you open your map and push the turret icon, you can see the range of your coverage as well, just to make sure that there's no gaps in your defense. Okay, so now we've got two turrets. You'll notice the blinking icon is bullet shaped. It's asking for ammunition. Turrets use ammo. So you'll want to, oh, and if we hover over it, you can see it uses yellow ammo, red ammo, and green ammo, or firearms, piercing rounds, and uranium rounds, right? So we can take any of those types of ammo, and then it will shoot at biters in range. Pretty straightforward. So you give it some ammo. I'm just going to hold Z twice on each of those. Now they're not complaining anymore. If any biters come into range, the turrets will shoot. So you'll use turrets to help defend your factory. And because you know the priority that biters are going to attack in, right? You know biters are going to attack your steam engines, your radars, and your mining first, right? So make sure that those are covered by turrets. Now something else to note too about the biters, while we're just waiting for the scanners to go. Let me go ahead and build some more radars to speed this up now, because I'm mostly done explaining the stuff that I need to explain. So another thing to note during free play is, and this doesn't happen during tutorial levels either, just free play. So during tutorials, you don't have to worry about this. In free play, the biters evolve over time, right? So as your pollution cloud spreads and your pollution cloud hits biters' nests, those biter nests are going to absorb pollution. The more pollution they absorb, the more the biters are going to evolve. So you start off with small biters that are really easy to kill. They will evolve into medium biters, big biters, and eventually behemoth biters right there's other types of biters too you got the regular bug biters you also have spitter biters that have ranged attacks they'll come attack as well the more evolved the biters are the harder they are to kill right so that's why you have different levels of ammo you have yellow ammo as your base level takes care of small to medium biters without too much fuss you have red ammo which takes care of small biters without basically any fuss at all it's just insta death takes care of medium biters really quickly and can take out large biters relatively effectively but will struggle a little bit against behemoth and then you've got the uranium ammo so if i take that out then you've got the uranium ammo which is great at killing everything so you've got the different tiered ammos in order to defend yourself you want to make sure that you are well enough defended as the biters continue to evolve in addition to evolution the more pollution that they absorb the larger their attack waves will become right the more that the more pollution they get the more they evolve the bigger their nests get the more biters will come in waves the waves will get bigger so you'll want to place more and more turrets as necessary right in order to make sure you're fully protected by the way when you have ghosts down if you don't want them to be there anymore you can right click on them or you can push this red icon here the deconstruction planner you might not have this in your game because this will only start showing up the first time once you have robots but you can push this deconstruction planner or you can push alt d on your keyboard so if you don't have this button you can still push alt d to get the deconstruction planner and you can just highlight over things that you want deconstructed or erased if they're ghosts later on this will come into play with bots you can mark things for deconstruction your bots will come deconstruct it but yeah um Let's see, what else? Let's go ahead and place some more radars. We're almost done. We've only got 10 more areas to scan. Okay. Let's see, what else? So yeah, as biters evolve, they get harder to kill. They become more numerous. You'll need to scale up your defense. More turrets. There's other, there's other types of turrets as well, which we can cover later. But you need to scale up your defense so that way you don't get overrun by biters. And then again, you use your map to see your coverage to make sure that there's no gaps in your defense. So for example, this area is covered, right? But if biters attack over this water and down this way, I'm not covered at all. The biters will kill whatever's here. The turret doesn't help. But if biters attack through here, the turret will kill them. You know, so that kind of thing. You'll want to use choke points like this, right? You can use cliffs to your advantage. Cliffs will get in your way. You're going to be annoyed by cliffs, but you can also use cliffs to your advantage to create natural chokes, right? The biters obviously can't run through cliffs. Neither can you. So the biters, when they attack over the lake, they either have to attack through here or through here. And they usually attack the closest path. So you stick a turret in a choke point 
and you're really well covered, right? Biters will go into the choke point and die. So as long as you have your choke points covered, you're all good. All right, so we're all done using radars to scan. Sector scan complete. Small shipwreck located to the southeast. All right, it's time to explore that area. And that concludes the third tutorial level. As always, if you guys do have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to discuss, I'm happy to answer. If there's something that you have questions about and I feel like I should cover it in an upcoming tutorial video, I'll be sure to do so. So please, please, please leave comments. And then if you're an experienced Factorio player, as always, please feel free to let me know if there's something that I didn't cover that you would like me to cover, and I will be happy to do so as well. I'm also happy to just chat in the comments, whatever you guys like. Um, yeah. As always, thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I hope you have an awesome day.